Okay, so temporary buy downs are all the rage right now. You know, seller credits are available, properties are sitting, sellers are willing to negotiate, and many times, you know, lenders are pushing to kind of the temporary buy them, two one buy down. And that can be a good solution. But it's important, you know, especially as a real estate agent or as a consumer, as a buyer, to understand, you know, what exactly is a buy down and what's the difference between a temporary buy down and a permanent buy down, because that can make a huge difference in terms of your buying power. And I'm going to illustrate that in this short little video here. Um, based upon a real life situation that I had, you know, not too long ago, where I had a borrower who was interested in a house. House was at 550, and uh, in order to qualify this borrower, we would have had to bring the price down. As you see in this example here, I would have had to bring the price down to 505,000. That's what I needed to get to in order for this borrower to qualify. The debt to income ratios were too high at 550, and that's the price reduction that we needed. And so you see here, you know, here's the base situation where the price is at 550. We had 5% down. This is an interest rate here. Now I'm just illustrating. I'm going off the, the actual original situation. But um, the debt to income ratio was 4% over what I was allowed to do. And so I needed $305 of payment relief in order for this borrower to qualify for this house. And the only way that we could do that was get the price down to 505. The seller wasn't willing to go down to 505,000. And so we came up with a solution that really was a win-win. All we needed from the seller was $13,700 in concession. And so instead of asking for a price reduction, we asked for a permanent buy-down of the rate. We asked for $13,700 in concessions. And in doing so, we could buy the rate down to 6%. And buying the rate down to 6% with that concession got our qualifying numbers in line. And so now, Instead of being out of luck with a seller holding the line, you know, not willing to go down to 505 and a buyer who can't possibly go up to 550, we got a seller that was willing to throw in $13,700 and a buyer that, that could then qualify at the full price of 550. So the seller nets 536, a lot more than he could have netted without this buy-down. Now this is a permanent buy-down. Our debt to income ratios got to where they needed to be and the buyers in the house. And so that's the power of a permanent buy down. Now, a temporary buy down can also be a very valuable tool, but it does nothing from a qualifying standpoint. And that's why it's important, I think, for realtors to understand is that right now you've got a lot of buyers who are discouraged out there because they're seeing their purchasing power go down the stairs bounding by twos, you know, and, and they're really discouraged and they're, and they're thinking they want to pull out. And the price point that they're willing to shop in is a lot less than what they used to be. And so this permanent buy down is a very powerful tool to try and get them back up to where they could have been. Because this buyer could have qualified, you know, maybe two months ago at 550 and he's still shopping at 550. And now he's saying, you know, now you're telling me you got to go down to 505 and they're looking at the market and they're saying, you know, I'm out. I don't, I'm, I'm just done for a while because, you know, there's just nothing out there at that price. This is a way with the permanent buy down to get them back up closer to where they needed to be and in this case, it you know really was the, the difference between getting the house and not getting the house at all and making the sale as a realtor and not making the sale at all. Now, if you have a borrower that qualifies, um, and, and, but there's just money on the table, you know that you know, there's a house that's been sitting, the buyer qualifies for the full price, but there's money on the table. The seller's, you know, the, the seller's willing to deal. And so you may want to use some of those funds for what's called a temporary buy-down. Now, the 2 one is not the only type of temporary buy-down, but this is what we're using for this illustration. And a, and a temporary buy-down or a 2 one buy-down, basically what that does is they take money and they put it in an escrow account and they use that to subsidize your payment for the first, in this case, two years. Now, the first year, the amount of money that's in that account is what um, what the payment differential would be if the rate were two points lower than the initial rate. So in this case, we said our base option was 6.625. So they calculate what the mortgage payment would be at 4.625. And then they calculate the difference between that and what your actual payment is at 6.625. And they put 12 months of that in an escrow account. And then the second year, the delta is 1%. So now they're going to calculate the payment as if it were 5.625. And they'll take 12 months of that difference and also put that in an escrow account. So the first two years, this borrower is paying as if he had a 4.625 in the first year, a 5.625 in the second year. And that can help some borrowers 
feel more comfortable about stepping up to play in the house. You know, it's not a good idea to put somebody in a house that they just can't qualify for, but maybe it's more of a comfort zone and they feel better about kind of stepping up to that payment gradually over time. You can get them into that 2-1 buy down. Now, one of the benefits of, you know, now first thing to point out on a 2-1 buy down, it does nothing for qualifying. So if in this situation, instead of a permanent buy down, we had just taken some of those funds and created a temporary buy down, that's great. It helps from a cash flow standpoint, but it doesn't change the qualifying. You're still qualifying with a temporary buy down based upon the full interest rate. And so this buyer couldn't have used a temporary buy down to do that. But let's again talk about the situation where this is a, um, a borrower who does qualify for the full purchase price and there's just money on the table. The seller is willing to contribute some. You want to ask for concessions and you, you bring this to your buyer and say, yeah, yeah, we can use this concession. We can lower the, you know, we can lower the purchase price potentially, or you can use that to do a temporary buy down. And so maybe that buyer is going to, you know, be willing to do that or, or, or be attracted by that. And one of the benefits of a temporary buy down that is an advantage over a permanent is these funds that go into the escrow account, let's say you have that same 13700 available, these funds that are in that escrow account are the buyer's funds. And so you get that as a, as a seller contribution that gets put in the lender's escrow account to subsidize those payments for the next two years so the buyer doesn't have to make the full payment for the next two years. But let's say six months down the road, rates come down. You know, now we're back in the fives again. Maybe we're back in the high fours again, you know, in, in the next, you know, let's say in the next half year, which is not a totally unreasonable situation or possibility. Let's say that that happens and then they want to go refinance. Well, in this case, those monies in that escrow account belong to the buyer. So they get refunded to the buyer or the borrower at, you know, when they pay off their old loan. And so that's an advantage here of a temporary buy down versus a permanent buy down. When you pay those points up front to buy that write down, those, those monies are gone, right? If you refinance three months later, if you sell the house six months later, you refinance whenever, um, you don't get any of that back. Now, the other thing I want to do a quick illustration here is just to show you um, how the buy down is calculated. There's really nothing that complicated about it. About it. Here's our scenario that we discussed. We have a 550 purchase price, 5% down is this loan. And so here's your monthly payment on a 30 year, this is principal and interest only. And so what they do is they just say, okay, what if we had a 4.63 or 625 interest rate? The first year, your, your actual payment would only be this. The difference is 657. So we're gonna take 12 months of that and put that into account. And then the second year, it's gonna be 5.625. Here's what the payment would be at that rate. Here's the delta. We're going to put that much in the account. And so there's nothing really that complicated about it. It's just taking the difference between what the payment would be at one rate versus another, taking 12 months of that, setting that aside for the borrower. That's really how you calculate a temporary buy down.